Hello, my name is Bill Burke. Pool number 18 at the Monterey Country Club is the pool that my family uses. The before photos that you will see in this slideshow show a pool that was bathed in shade from the trees. Six trees were removed as part of the pool renovation, and every plant, flower, bush, shrub, grass, and other flora was ripped up and replaced with concrete, dirt, rocks, cactus, and stick plants. What we now have is almost no shade at the pool, and it's often impossible to sit around the pool because of the searing desert heat. Photo, photos and homeowner observations prove that there was no damage to the decks, walls, and fences from tree roots. Palm trees simply do not have invasive roots. The trees and floor were removed instead to make room for a more concrete deck area, which is a complete waste given the low homeowner usage at that pool. This beautiful carob tree is situated outside the pool area on the golf course away from the fence and the deck and was causing no damage to the fence or the deck. If the board was concerned that it had a significant root structure, that could have been easily mitigated with root barriers and other established techniques. There was simply no reason to cut that tree down. Number nine is the signature pool in our complex. It's the first pool you see when you enter the complex. Nine beautiful trees were removed around this pool, along with everything that is the color green. Even the arborists hired by the board recommended that the two beautiful carob trees along the street should be retained. Instead, bulldozers leveled the lush mounds of grass outside the pool fence and replaced it with ugly red composite dirt. It now has a Mars appearance and projects heat. The beautiful flora inside the pool fence was replaced with concrete, rocks, dirt, and stick plants. All shade and privacy enjoyed by the homeowners who used that pool has been lost. The board claims that the mounds of grass outside the pool fence caused water runoff into the street. Assuming that was the case, the solution was to change irrigation practices. If your home is infected with termites, you eradicate the termites. You don't burn down the home. These mounds outside the fence area are seen throughout the complex. This pool now would not be found suitable at a cheap motel. These two carob trees you see here are perfectly healthy. As you see, they're now gone. The story for pool number three is the same as the story for eight, pools 18 and nine. I'll let the photos speak for themselves. Pool number 26 was butchered worse than pools 18, 9, and 3, if that's even possible.
There was absolutely no basis for the removal of these beautiful towering palm trees located outside the pool complex. Those trees signified what is unique about the Monterey Country Club and what attracted so many of us to purchase homes in this development. is the pool that is constantly touted by the board as making the best case for the pool renovations. The drive-by look of the desert landscape outside the fence area is what the board wants you to see. But let's take a look at the before and after photos inside the fence and around the pool. The neighbors loved the trees and plants around the pool because they provided beauty and shade. They also shielded from view an ugly towering chain link fence that was constructed to ward off golf balls. The neighbors begged the board to leave these trees in place and use as a template for their renovation. The modest renovation completed at pool number 14, which you'll see in a moment. The board ignored their pleas and removed the trees and plants. Here you see that chain link fence that is now clearly visible and was shielded by the trees, as you can see here. We're now going to look at six of the more than 20 pools that have not yet been renovated, but may be on the chopping block. As you look at these non-renovated pools, imagine what they would look like if they were renovated using the same template as the renovated pools you've just seen. Keep in mind that almost all 37 pools in the complex have the same pool deck area, which is nine feet from the edge of the concrete to the pool coping right at the pool. So for these pools, the deck area must be expanded and all trees and shrubs, flowers, and grass that get in the way must be removed and replaced with concrete, deck, dirt, rocks, cactus, and stick plants, just like the pools 18, 9, 3, 26, and 19. Your pool could be next, so look at these photos carefully, please. All that greenery you see there would be removed to re make room for the expansion of the deck, which is totally unnecessary. Who knows what happens to these trees? Maybe they're causing cracks in the wall. Maybe not. Here you see a nine-foot deck area. It's got to be expanded, and all that shrubbery you see there will be gone replaced with rocks, dirt, stick plants. Here's an example of a mound like the mound we saw at pool number nine. So all the trees you see in this photo have to be removed, and these beautiful grassy mounds must be bulldozed flat and replaced with red composite just like pool number nine. Imagine these bushes and trees and plants gone and the deck expanded with more concrete.
I don't see how anyone can find that acceptable. For water conservation, these trees you see here in that lush grassy area should be removed and replaced with desert landscape. Here you're going to see a pool that was modestly and attractively renovated. And the pool number 19 homeowners begged the board to renovate their pool using this as a model. Their request was rejected. Notice in this renovation that the trees were left in place and the beautiful shrubs and bushes. Here's my question. Why the major change in pool renovation policy? I want to talk for just a moment about the pool number 26 walkway that you've heard about. This walkway was built on common area solely to benefit four homes, including a home that's owned by a director. The homeowner association paid for the construction of this walkway. We're told the director did not vote to approve the project, and I have no reason to doubt this claim. But I wonder, did the director know it was being built? Did he see the plans? I, I just don't know. The walkway was approved allegedly because the grass you see here was unsafe for the four home homeowners to walk on. This grass does not appear any more unsafe to me than the grass in the back of every other home in the complex. Here you see the walkway. Well, it got noticed by a homeowner and was called to the attention of the Homeowners Association. Trish Forte, the homeowner general manager, inspected the walkway and stated an obvious design error had occurred. So the walkway is extended at each end to make it appear it's for all homeowners. Here's my question. I think the walkway now is even more dangerous than it was before it was constructed because of the possibility of falls by homeowners when they move off this paved walkway onto the wet and slippery grass, which you see here in this photo, which is at an incline. Same thing at this end of the walkway. That appears to me to be totally unsafe. So if a homeowner is walking along this walkway and not paying attention, maybe looking back, talking to a friend, and steps on this grass, which is on an incline, and it's slippery and wet, he or she is going to have their feet pulled off from under them. They're going to fall backwards and crack their head on that deck. I just think this is unsafe and needs to be remedied by the Homeowners Association soon. Thank you very much for your attention to uh, this presentation.